that our offensive operation is about to begin. Soon you will be some distance to the west from where you are now. Comrades, our motorized rifle battalion has been directed to spearhead the offensive. We will be the advance guard for the regiment, which means we will be the first unit to encounter the enemy. Ideally, we would like to achieve complete surprise and reach our objective without encountering the enemy. But we cannot expect that to happen. Knowing the enemy, he will be deploying to his forward areas. This means it will be inevitable that our force will make contact with him. We have a term for that. When we make contact with the enemy, we will be conducting a meeting engagement. Now you all know what a meeting engagement is. Whether the enemy does, I cannot say for certain. They do not use that term. They do not appear to have a similar movement. Their closest maneuver, according to our intelligence, is what they call movement to contact. From your training, you know the meeting engagement is combat between opposing units advancing rapidly toward each other. Such an engagement is conducted within the context of Soviet Army doctrine. This doctrine, as you know, stresses speed, maneuverability, and continuous operations. Keep this doctrine in mind at all stages of the meeting engagement. From the time we first make contact with the enemy, through our initial penetration. At that time, we expect the enemy will have reacted to deploy his tactical reserve, either to counterattack or to rush in to fill the gap. By this time, we should be deep within the enemy's formation, and he should have deployed to block our attack. We will also be undertaking flanking movements. Ideally, these movements will force the enemy into a general withdrawal. But it could happen that the enemy will have been quick and successful in establishing defensive positions and launching counterattacks. If so, we will need to identify the enemy's route of advance so as to launch a counterattack of our own. That, comrades, is the essence of a meeting engagement. It is conducted throughout in accordance with our doctrine of speed, maneuverability, and continuous operations. Now, this is the route assigned by regiment for our march during the first night. We will proceed along the road from here until contact with the enemy is made. Our battalion has been reinforced and is at maximum strength. Altogether, we comprise the advance guard. We will march in standard formation in this order. First, a combat reconnaissance patrol consisting of a motorized rifle platoon, an engineer squad, and a chemical reconnaissance detachment. This patrol will precede the advance party by up to 10 kilometers. The advance guard main force will follow the advance party at a distance of from five to 10 kilometers. The main force will be followed by the rear party at three kilometers. Observe the positions and distances of the flanking parties. The advance party will be formed around a motorized rifle company. It will include the following elements, a tank platoon, an anti-tank detachment, a self-propelled artillery battery, an engineer detachment, a chemical detachment, and an anti-aircraft detachment. 
The advance guard main force will be formed around the motorized rifle battalion minus. Also the 120 millimeter mortar battery and the battalion headquarters. The following elements will be added to the main body. A tank company minus. An anti-tank platoon. An artillery battalion minus. An engineer platoon minus. An anti-aircraft detachment. And our battalion rear, which will include the medical post. Finally, one platoon of motorized infantry will form the rear guard. And two platoons of motorized infantry will form the two flanking parties. Questions? Colonel, as commander of the 1st Motorized Rifle Company, is my command vehicle to be positioned just behind the tank platoon leading the advance party? That's correct, Captain. And Captain Ivanov, as artillery battery commander, you will be in your command vehicle right behind Captain Prozorovsky. And to all of you, this reminder, do not become engaged in fighting minor pockets of resistance. Sweep past them. Our following, our flanking units will pick them up. Also remember that the meeting engagement is a very fluid situation. This can result in changing formations. Be ready to react to my order. Comrade Gabras. The Carter. Your companies are in the advance guard main force. You will detach one rifle platoon each to provide right and left flank security. And Captain Kasrov, you will detach a platoon to provide the rear guard security. Rear security. These security platoons have complete freedom to maneuver. Their job is to protect our advance guard and prevent enemy units from interfering with or halting our forward movement. Lieutenant Solonov. Yes, Colonel Zavi. I want you to explain the importance of your platoon's mission as a reconnaissance patrol. Yes, Comrade Colonel. First, it is essential that we accurately identify all terrain features. Second, it is vital that we see the enemy first. We should catch him in march formation. It is important that we report his position and strength as soon as possible. Third, our patrol chemical recon team must identify the enemy's chemical and nuclear capabilities, especially its potential effect on our force if employed. Our mission is to identify anything that might hamper the advance of the main force. Finally, our mission is reconnaissance and nothing more. We should avoid, if at all possible, direct contact with the enemy. Very good, Lieutenant. Questions? Colonel, what about communication security during the march and engagement? Radio silence will be maintained until contact with the enemy is made. Visual signals and messengers will be used on the march. My command vehicle will be at the head of the main body, so your messengers will know where to find me. Captain Kastra, explain the communications procedure following initial enemy contact. Yes, Comrade Colonel. On contact, communications will leave the main column route and set up operations on terrain that will mask enemy interception. We do this to deny him as much information about us as the situation permits. Excellent. Now, once the reconnaissance patrol has reported detection of the enemy, the advance party will move in quickly to engage him. Probably initial contact will be with the enemy's reconnaissance force. This force must be destroyed quickly. Captain Prozorowski, what will your advance party do at this time? My advance party would move quickly to engage the main enemy force. True, but it could happen that your advance party won't be able to deal with the enemy force. If that happens, then our main force will move in to engage him. Keep in mind, comrades, the enemy 
will also be trying to rapidly engage so for us speed is of primary importance speed allows us to move into the best positions first once committed we prefer that our units engage as opportunities arise This is much better than our delaying to form and launch a coordinated full force assault. Such delays would only favor the enemy and give him time to better position his forces. Our motorized rifle battalion contains combat, command, control, and support units. Its speed is of primary importance. At night, we average from 15 to 20 kilometers. By day, 20 to 30 kilometers. Once our column has been underway for several hours, designated control points will be established. Your units must pass through these points at precise times which you will be given. Reconnaissance will be conducted at all times along the route of march and at all control points. There will also be designated stopping points along the route. There, you will service your vehicles, make any necessary equipment repairs, and briefly rest your soldiers. Our battalion must be capable of defeating enemy reconnaissance and security units. We must also be capable of dealing with an enemy two times our strength. Captain Kostroff, explain how the enemy handles his communications. Comrade Colonel, in situations like this, the enemy employs communications in quite a different manner than we do. And we believe this difference favors us. In a meeting engagement, we enjoy a distinct advantage over the enemy in radio electronic combat. We have this advantage because our mission and battlefield procedures call for establishment of routes and objectives in advance of starting our march. We have little need for lengthy communications as we proceed to our objective. If the enemy tries to jam us, it does him no good. There's nothing to jam. On the other hand, our own jamming of the enemy's radio communication will make it more difficult for him to react against us in a coordinated manner. We know that the enemy too often misuses his radio. And this we will use against him. Very good, Captain. Our non-use of communications should serve us very well indeed. Now, how about the rest of our regiment? The main force of the regiment will be 20 to 30 kilometers behind our advance guard. This main force contains the bulk of command, control, and support elements. The main force will advance on one route. The tactical situation will determine whether attached resources will be with subordinate units or included with the main body. If our advance guard cannot deal with the enemy quickly, then the regimental main force or a portion of it will move forward and engage him. We can expect rapid commitment once the enemy is engaged. As advanced guard commander, I shall be relaying my battle plan based on my initial contact to regimental command. The regimental commander will direct the main force accordingly based on my report. This will continue until the regimental commander has come far enough forward to observe the battlefield situation personally. He can then make necessary adjustments. The mission, terrain, expected enemy opposition, and the speed at which we move will determine the formation, which can be column, line, wedge, inverted wedge, or echelon. Keep in mind that while we are advancing, 
Our regimental commander will be providing us with new information on the size of the enemy force, what the enemy is doing, and what the enemy is expected to do. Therefore, it will not be necessary for me to retransmit this information to you. The regimental commander will be receiving this information from the divisional and regimental recon units. Colonel. Yes, Major. We're aware that the enemy stresses the use of tactical air support. Will our defenses protect our service support elements against an aerial attack? Yes, Major. Air defense in our advance guard will be continuous and cover all approaches. This way, we will have as early a warning as possible. Any alert will come from the battalion observation post, which has that responsibility. The observation post will tell our advance guard of the appearance and approach of enemy aircraft. Anti-aircraft weapons will be prepared to deliver their fire, both on the move and when we are at a short halt. Small arms fire will also be employed from combat vehicles during movement or at a halt. On my signal, you will disperse your units in the procedure established. Use every protective feature of the terrain and use camouflage. Of course, our force will have its own tactical air support. Our aerial reconnaissance will give us information on the location of the enemy, the size of his force, his actual movements, and his probable movements. Our air forces will be making strikes to stop or delay his movement. This will force him to change his battle plans, causing him again to communicate. Ideally, our air strikes could destroy him where he is. I wish to stress something else. In this kind of engagement, there will probably be no solid front line. Our objective is to keep the enemy from either deploying or continuing a forward march. Our mission, at all costs, is to keep the enemy confused and off balance. The essence of a meeting engagement, once deployment from the march is made, is to engage and hold him in combat. By keeping the intensity high, situations will develop which allow attacking the enemy flanks and even his rear. We must maneuver quickly. This activity occurs in a very fluid, constantly changing situation. Defensive positions will be broken wherever they are encountered. Now, suppose the enemy can organize a defense. In this case, our entire advance guard would mount a full frontal assault. If necessary, the regimental main force might join us. Should that happen, our sister regiments might be directed to attack the enemy flanks and rear. Captain Prozorowski, what do we do if that should occur? Comrade Colonel, in that situation, we would engage the enemy while he is preparing a counterattack or moving to a more advantageous defensive position. It is our mission to keep him from preparing a defense or organizing a counterattack. Now here, time becomes especially critical. We must seize and hold the initiative by using our mobility and intense firepower. Very good, Captain. Captain Governors, what will the range and intervals of our battle units be? Colonel, our attack frontage is determined by our battalion operations, combat force strength, the composition of the enemy force, the effect of our use of nuclear or conventional weapons, prevailing terrain and other battlefield conditions. Motorized rifle platoons can attack along a line with a 200 meter front. Intervals between our combat vehicles will be up to 100 meters. 
A company following this procedure can attack along a front of up to 800 meters with intervals of 400 to 500 meters between companies. There will be a reserve force of one or two platoons. A motorized rifle battalion, such as ours, deployed in frontal attack formation can operate along a front of from one to 2,000 meters. Very good, Captain. Now, I want to caution you all about something. During our march, it is important that you either bypass or isolate populated areas, small towns and villages. Combat in these areas only ties down your men and equipment. That results in what we want least, delays. If you cannot bypass these areas, go straight through, Do not stop, or bunch up as you move. I also want to say a few words about our night movement. It gives us several advantages. It allows us to move under the cover of darkness with less chance of detection. It reduces our losses from both conventional and nuclear weapons. It increases our chances of surprising the enemy. Whatever the time and place, our movement will result in a meeting engagement. Comrades, time is growing short and much is yet to be done. In a meeting engagement, Victory goes to the side which best reconnoitres the enemy, locates his forces and then deploys and attacks quickly. Victory goes to the side which best uses the effect of his nuclear weapons more quickly and efficiently. First fires his conventional weapons and sustains intensive firepower moves rapidly and pursues every advantage presented to him and uses weather, time and terrain. Maximum advantage. But you know, comrades, in the final analysis, what determines your victory is your soldiers, their courage, discipline, decisiveness, Persistence. Your soldiers, under your leadership, and your leadership includes your knowledge of your weapons and what they can do. You must be skilled. Once in battle, you must be dynamic, stubborn, resourceful. Once committed, seize and then keep the initiative you must always impose your will on the enemy do all that and victory